Uh oh, hence meeting Zorin. Hmm, I don't like meeting that tug. What a bad person editor. <laughs> to find a barge full of parts to give to the engines, but he was needing to watch out for Zorin. He'd never met him before. He remembered about a bully called Oliver, who was a bully tug, who gave his friend a hard time, so he just steamed in. I've never known Zorin before, except Zip and Zog. He told himself, I reckon he's a bully. He found his waiting barge, hitched up to it, but looked around first. Hmm. No sign of Zorin anywhere. I'm smaller than him, so... I can hide away from him, he thought. There was a shed he found some years ago. He has known it for years, so he decided to go in it. Just as he went to the shed, he caught sight of Zorin. Uh oh, that would be him, he thought. He got in the shed and switched off his engine after taking in his barge. Phew, that was close. Zorin came steaming in after working in some other parts of Tasman Sodor. He was ducking, but he didn't see Hank sneak away with a barge of engine parts. Hank was pleased to get out of Darren Pod, but he had to work in it again because he was to sort out the goods from the barges. The next day he was sorting them out. Zorin was spying on her to see what he was doing. I wonder what he's doing with the barge of engine parts, he wondered. Phew! All the goods are sorted. Now I'd better get me to the engine workshop. Hello, Hank. What are you doing? Oh, uh... Hello, Zorin. Just finished with the good sorting and just heading for home.
But Zorin didn't leave Hank alone. He started chasing him. You'll have to tell me what you're hiding. Hank was faster than Zorin. He went steaming along the river. But Charlie Wood's chaser would not leave him alone. He found another road hidden in the bushes. He steamed in it and vanished. Huh? Where did he go? Hank rejoined the main river and went homeward in peace. <laughs> that Zed Stagbonder didn't see me, he chuckled. Little did he know that Zorin would stalk him into where he took the barge. He saw the father's docks that he was heading for when he suddenly heard the same whistle. Oh no, it's him again, he thought. Quickly, he hid in the river and went to sloping main docks. He went forward and saw another hidden bush river, vanished again. After covering up using a bush as a door, <laughs> Zorin will never find me in here. Now to find the branch line of Tillis, he steamed quietly. The forest was a bit quiet, but he listened if some chuffing was heard. Hmm, listening is scary. Huh? What's that? Suddenly, he saw a black stack. It was all no Zorgan again. He turned his engine off and waited till he was out of sight. Where is that tug? He's got to be round here somewhere. He looked round the dock, but he could see no sign of Hank. He was nowhere to be seen. He went away. Hank was still hiding. He listened till Zorin was out of sight. Quickly, he turned his engine on and went to Tilly's branch line. Hello, Hank. What took you so long to get here? Zorin was about to question me, Tilly. Give me a hard time, nearly. It's a good thing he didn't come here to steal these parts. They're for me in case my tubes need replacing. Thank goodness he didn't. He told Tilly his work in Devonport, and she told him an advice to tell him about it. The next day, the dispatcher sent him to Devonport docks to take the first curl. Zorin came up. Are you going to tell me what you were hiding, he asked. Yes, but I wasn't hiding the bars of engine parts. They were for Tilly, our engine friend. She told me that if you rob her, she wouldn't get better. Captain Cobb told me you were sent to work here, and he allowed you to work in other docks. Having a lot to think about. Zorin suddenly got affected from what Hank told him. He remembered his days at the American Museum as a punishment. He left to work on what he was doing. (laughs) 
That will teach him of accusing me, I giggled quietly. Now oh, then, let's get that out. <laughs>